What's up guys and welcome back. Uh, we're gonna call this a two for Tuesday. I've had so many questions today that uh, I'm gonna go ahead and answer a bunch of them in one uh, one, one, one video, for, video for you guys. And we'll just call it a two for Tuesday. You get two videos in one day. So uh, I've had several questions on what kind of gas mileage do I get? Well, loaded, usually around eight, nine. Uh, I've been as high as 10 on a couple loads, depending on, on the size of the trailer. Uh, empty, this truck, usually I'm in the, the high teens, or if I'm in a lower speed limit, like where I'm, I can only do 60 or 65 and I'm empty, I've even got as high as uh, the low 20s. Um, what do I need to do to to be able to haul? Do I have to have a CDL? No, you do not have to have a CDL. Encouraged, yes. Uh, <clears throat> what kind of equipment do I need? Well, before we talk about the kind of equipment you, that you need, let's talk about the vehicle that you need to do it. Do you need a brand new 450? Do you need the, the biggest, the baddest, the, the craziest truck out there? No, absolutely not. Um, I know people that are running three quarter ton trucks, the Horizon, uh, and I would assume that most of the other ones are the same way, do require a diesel. So you have to make sure you have that. Uh, they don't do any of that that gas engine stuff. But <clears throat> if you're following me on Instagram, you already kind of knew this video was coming. If you're not, it's down there. Go ahead, just click that little triangle over on the that side, and you can see my Instagram down there. Uh, make sure you're following me there. Shoot me an email if you have any questions. I've got quite a few of those. I appreciate them. I like reaching out and giving you guys the information that I can to help you out. Now, what you saw was that Duramax that I told you about in the video this morning, the one that blew up, the one that caused me to buy for the first time ever in my life a Ford. Um, again, did I need to go this route? No, but I have goals. So I, I don't want to be hauling RV forever. I have goals and those goals required me to get into a 450. So we'll see how it goes. I am really digging this RV thing, so I may stick around for it. We'll see. Um, so no, you do not need the biggest, the baddest, the whatever. But do you have a truck sitting in your driveway right now? You want that truck to go make you some money? Because I can tell you right now that out of the 28 loads that I have done for this company in two and a half months, only two require a CDL. So when you saw my video of uh, 10 loads, 10,000 miles, I think it was that one. It was one of my earlier videos uh, where I talked about how much I made in a month. You can do that. You don't have to have the big bad girl like I do. You can have any diesel truck. Now, especially considering the time of year it is, strongly consider four-wheel drive. If you don't have four-wheel drive, it's not the end of the world. Just make sure you're running in, you know, Texas, Georgia, Alabama, Florida, Louisiana, those areas down there. Stay away from the New York, Massachusetts, Pennsylvania area. Probably don't want to go uh, through Wyoming like I learned. And probably don't want to go too deep into the Idaho, Oregon, Washington, Montana area. However, two-wheel drive will do the rest of it just fine. Um, <clears throat> make sure you have a diesel. Four-wheel drive is highly preferred, but a three-quarter ton, and they do accept short bed if you have the Anderson hitch. Uh, I don't know anything about that. I've heard of it. I kind of vaguely know what it is, but I don't really know anything about it other than it's a fifth wheel hitch like that, but it actually moves as you steer and does some weird stuff that I, I couldn't answer. I'm not going to pretend to answer. I, I don't know. Anyway, so if you've got that truck sitting there, put it to work. Go get some money for yourself. Um... I stumbled into this job on accident, uh, like I said earlier, walking through YouTube. Now, as far as what I'm making, you know, I had that one great month that uh, I, I made. I, I made almost ten grand. I'm averaging. So far, it's only been three months, but I'm I'm averaging right around seven eight 
Uh, now that's that's before my expenses, so my take home is probably around five and a half, maybe six. It's not great, but for someone who's brand new, I've messed up on my scheduling and planning on a few loads and hurt myself in that way. Um, and I've been bit by weather a couple times. It's not terrible. I'm putting these videos out so that those of you that are coming into this brand new don't make the same mistakes I did, don't have the hiccups that I did, and you can start smooth and run hard. Now, what do you need? What do you absolutely have to have? Um, we will start with the basics. Do you have to have a fifth wheel hitch? No, but not having one is going to limit the amount of loads that you have. Do you have to have an auxiliary tank? No, but now you're running the risk of going through areas, especially on, on uh, I-80, where there's a very large gap in between fuel stops. Uh, toolbox, we'll get into that in a minute. Uh, I will warn you, that's the one thing that I didn't get cleaned up before I started this. And that's because even though I haven't been running, doing any loads, anything, since uh, 9 o'clock this morning when I dropped that one off, I've been uh, running around like crazy all day trying to get everything ready for tomorrow. So, truck got an oil change, truck got a bath, I went and filled up the def, I filled up both of the diesel tanks, I got all my supplies that I need for running tomorrow, and the truck is absolutely ready to go. Now, to answer, or to get back to the topic that we, we started on here, what you do have to have is, oh, you can't see that at all this it's called a weight distribution or anti-sway hitch now what that does is it hooks in to your normal receiver two minute, and then these bars hook into it and those bars go onto the tongue of the trailer which would be here and it distributes the weight uh, off of the truck and back onto the trailer itself so that you can pull a little bit heavier loads safer. Um, the rest of most of what's in there. Oh, you do have to have a safety strap. I chose orange. I'll get to the reason for orange in a minute. You also have to have, can't see it in there, your uh, three triangles. They require a torque wrench. I have a tool kit because I never travel without tools because you never know when things are going to go sideways. Uh, jumper cables because... You never know when you're going to need jumper cables. I mean, do you have to have those? No. This video is about what's required. They do require a torque wrench. They do require a basic tool set. They do require the weight distribution hitch. They do require the safety triangles. They do require... This is a big one that I didn't know about. A battery, a deep cycle marine style battery. Now, the reason for that is all of these RVs have emergency brakes on them. If they become disconnected from the truck, the brake is applied automatically and it stops the trailer. Now, that's why in the RV transport, we don't have to have the safety chains that you see uh, all the hotshot guys running because the RV has the emergency breakaway and if you're hauling a fifth wheel <coughs> it's a uh, it's got a different locking device than a gooseneck and they consider it safer now you do have to have the safety chains if you're on a bumper pull trailer uh, so if I worded that poorly i apologize you do have to have the safety chains on the bumper pull trailer so what i have is two clevises for these safety chains and this is for that emergency breakaway cable that i was telling you about and it's just a little tiny steel braided cable and it's got a little plastic connector on the end of it and when it comes undone it locks up the brakes i also have one 
right there for when I'm running a fifth wheel. Now, do you have to have those fancy connectors? No, just makes life simpler. These are things that I've picked up throughout my runs that I've learned if I have two of these clevises, sure, it cost me an extra, I think it was like nine bucks, but I don't have to worry about, oh, did I move this? Where did I put that? I can keep the one down there and I can keep the one up here and I'm always ready to go. I don't need any clevises up here for chains because I don't have to have those when I'm running a fifth wheel. Now, back inside here, they do require a first aid kit. You're required a, a fire extinguisher. They're inside there, it's dark. Uh, I was expecting this to be a little bit better lit. I'm a, I'm a little late. I've been, like I said, I've been running around all day doing, getting stuff done. Uh, they do not require the fifth wheel lube, something I choose to do. I also run it on the balls when I'm running the um, regular tongue trailers. Uh, other than that, I've just got some basic tools in there. Um, pliers, uh, vice grips. Uh, I do have one of those jumper pack start box things just because you never know. Um, <clears throat> do you have to remove your seat and put a bed? No, I chose to. Uh, I also put, again, you can't see, and I can't turn the light on while we're on the video, so I apologize, but I do have, you can see in my other video, I have right here, I have a kind of a dresser set up with shirts, underwear, socks, pants. You don't have to have all that, but it makes your life simpler. Now, they do say you have to, and I have seen why, you must have a printer that has the ability to print from your cell phone. I took it a step further. I have my iPad here, which is connected to the Wi-Fi that the truck generates, which is connected to the printer. So I can access work emails at any time because I have this giant screen right in my face. So I can handle it instead of having to pull over, find a truck stop or a rest area and get in and take care of it. Tap, tap, tap on the screen, one quick touch, not a safety concern. And I am back on or I, I don't have to get off the road. I can just run, take care of whatever I gotta do. If I have to call my dispatcher, uh, my phone sits on this mount right here, which is how I got that video in the snow. And the truck has Apple CarPlay. Yes, I run an iPhone. Those of you who don't like it, I apologize. Phone of my choice. Uh, voice commands call the dispatcher, voice commands call the control room, voice commands call the, the front office, whatever I have to do. Emails are right there. I can take care of all of that. Again, these are just little things that I've picked up that I have learned that I'm trying to pass on to you, to those of you who want to get into this life. Uh, also, I've touched on this once before. I will absolutely do it again. If you have a 2016 or newer Ford and you have the push button tailgate, not the, not the pull handle, the push button or this, uh, this fob with the release, do yourself a favor. You see these little bolts right here? They're all across the tailgate. Take this one out, get yourself a longer bolt and a washer, a little piece of chain and a hook, and put it into this tie down strap. The reason for that, my fourth load was actually the exact same as the one that I dropped off this morning you saw in the video. And the tailgate opened itself, which is a known fault in the 16 and newer Fords. Get on the internet, get on the forums, you can see it. It's not just me, it's all over and it wiped out, you can see right there, ate that 44 foot toy hauler. I said that wasn't happening again. I threw that chain on there, took me all of five minutes, wham, bam, done, easy day. Uh, actually, while I'm sitting here thinking of this, those of you that saw Toe Piglet's video and that's how you got here, yeah. Uh, anyway, that's, I'm going to go ahead and end this. This video is getting really long. I'm sorry, guys. Um, if you have any questions, please, please, please. My email is in the description below. My Instagram is in the description below. Hit me on DM. Send me an email. I will respond. Um, if you think I missed anything, let me know. I'm kind of running through this real fast, trying to get the information out to you guys as quick as I can, because first thing in the morning, I am hitting the road. Uh, stay tuned to find out where we're going because as always that will be in the video um 
make sure you're subscribing make sure you're leaving comments hit me up on instagram send me an email let's get in touch let's grow together let's make this thing amazing and as always those of you that are out there running these highways like i am i wish you fair winds following seas i will catch you guys later